Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, we're making a really gorgeous comfort food staple. We're making a leek and chicken pot pie. It's essentially like a pot pie, but I think a little bit more elevated. I'm gonna add bacon to mine, lots of leeks, and a really luscious, creamy, delicious sauce. It's insane. The first thing I'm gonna work on is poaching my chicken. Now, this is not making chicken stock because we're not using any bones, but we are poaching some chicken because I'm gonna wanna add shredded cooked chicken to this. And all I do is I take a pot of simmering water to it. I just had, I add a whole onion halved, a whole head of garlic, a little bit of parsley, and a good handful of salt. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up to a boil because I want it to simmer for a bit so that those flavors can really bloom into the boiling water. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a mixture of boneless, skinless chicken thighs, although bone in and I could just take the skin off, chicken thighs would be great, and some chicken breasts. I like to do a combination. If you wanna skip this step completely and just use rotisserie chicken, you can. Um, we just need some really tender pulled chicken that we can add to the sauce. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that to a simmer, let it simmer for a bit. Then I'm gonna make add my chicken to it, let it cook, let it be just become beautiful and flavorful and tender. Um, and then once that's done, we will work on the actual filling for the pot pie. Chicken is poached. It doesn't look the best. I don't think poached chicken ever looks good, but it's done its job. It's nice and lovely and tender and cooked through. And we have some delicious stock, some delicious broth that we're gonna add to our pot pie filling in my shallow Dutch oven, which by the way, I'm baking the whole thing in my shallow Dutch oven and I'm preheating my oven to 375. I've got some bacon. It's always good to have your, fr your bacon in the freezer when you're using it like chopped up into sauces and stuff because it makes the chopping easier because it's not sliding all over the place. Now for a leek pot pie, leek and chicken, we're gonna need the leeks. We got chicken, we need the leeks. This is what leeks look like, okay? They're in the alien family, so, you know, think onions, chives, uh, shallots, that sort of thing. They are very, very dirty. You never want, here's what I do. I never even like to open them on my cutting board. I like to do this by the sink. I've told you this before, because there's a lot of dirt, watch. In between the leaves, you see there's a ton of dirt. And so what I'm going to do, I'll do it on my cutting board because obviously I want to show you. Um, everything's edible. This part up here is a little bit tough. So I just remove that, but the rest is pretty edible. You're gonna wanna take the stem off and then I slice them in half lengthwise. Just be careful because it's not stable, obviously because it's like a round object. Slice them thin like so. Do you see how filthy dirty this is? See that, see the dirt? You're gonna wanna slice these really thinly and you're gonna go ahead and put them in a giant bowl. I use a pot. Cover them with water after you've sliced them, that way they separate really easily. Cover them in some water and just go ahead and clean them and let them sit into that big pot of water uh, just to release all of the dirt and just Give it a zhuzh around with your hands just to make sure that the dirt is kind of falling off um, of the leaves. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this to both of them and get them cleaned up. All right, bacon came out. I went ahead and got rid of the bacon fat just because I find it to be a little bit overwhelming. I am adding some butter and to it, I'm gonna go ahead and add our very clean and chopped leeks. Yes! Got those in there. Those are gonna cook down um, quite a bit, actually. They'll cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. I'm gonna hit them with a good pinch of salt. That way it kind of helps speed that process along. Where's my PVC pipe? Where's my PVC pipe? You're not looking for major caramelization. You're just looking for everything to kind of cook down. I will develop a little bit of color, but it's just gonna take some time and just be patient with it. And then in the meantime, uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and just shred my poached chicken. When you shred your chicken, this is gonna sound really weird. I do this sometimes in my standing mixer, but when you shred it by hand, try to pinch at the chicken, watch the difference. You can shred it, right? 
that's fine. Shredding it is fine, but then watch what happens when you start pinching it, right? When you pinch it, you see how it kind of falls apart a lot more? That kind of keeps the chicken from having those giant dry chunks in your mouth. I know for some reason, I just feel like it blends with everything so much better. It almost, I want to say it almost melts into the sauce. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just in my head, but I promise you it works. Leeks look so good. You can see they've cooked down so much. I'm gonna go ahead and hit them with a little bit of flour because I want this to be a really thick, delicious, yummy gravy situation. <laughs> um, that's gonna coat that chicken. Just cook it long enough until you no longer see raw bits of flour anywhere. And now we're gonna deglaze, right? Now, you can just go ahead and go straight in with your stock. I like a little white wine. I like a little acidity because it kind of takes away that one note dimension and it gives you a little more balance. Um, you don't wanna use wine? Don't. Like I said, just use a bit more stock and just go ahead and Stir it in to make sure you're lifting any bits off the bottom. And now this is so simple. You just wait. You're going to need to add your stock. Go straight from one pan to another. Very simple, very delicious, very much my speed. You'll need about, I'd say, four cups or so of stock. And then you're going to need a little bit of heavy cream. And by a little bit, I mean, by a little bit, I mean quite a bit. <laughs> I like this to be very rich, very wonderful, and almost luxurious. Add your cream back in. Add your cream back in. Add your cream in. Fantastic. Give it a stir. And then just some seasoning of your choice. I really like an all-purpose seasoning for this. You just take your favorite dried herb and spices that you particularly love with chicken and then go ahead and add them right in here so things like dried thyme dried sage marjoram rosemary garlic onion all yummy things just make your own blend which i find to be so much more exciting um, and then to this i'm going to go ahead and add some carrots they're going to keep their beautiful color for the most part and retain a little bit of texture which is so nice give those a nice stir Bring this to a boil, and then we'll move on to the next step. Look how good that looks. By the way, I meant to say four ladlefuls of stock, not four cups of stock, four ladlefuls, like about two cups of stock. Anyway, this is looking fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and add the shredded chicken, the bacon. I also added some black pepper, plenty of parsley, and you're just gonna stir all this in just like that. I'm gonna turn it off because this is gonna go into the oven in a few seconds anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give everything a really good stir. This is so fantastic and would be a phenomenal, phenomenal entree for a holiday table. So you don't wanna do the whole turkey thing. You could use turkey for this instead of chicken or if you're doing a smaller gathering and you don't wanna do the whole giant turkey and whatnot. This is like so perfect. I don't know that you would need a whole lot more with the exception of maybe a couple of salads or a roast veg or something alongside. Maybe some peas. It would be perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get my puff pastry and get everything rolled out. All right, your puff pastry should be obviously thawed if it's frozen, um, but keep it cold in your fridge so that it's A, really easy to handle because it doesn't sort of stick all over the place and it's all warm and whatnot, um, but also it puffs up so much better when it's really cold when it goes into the oven. Now here's the thing. I'm gonna probably end up using about one and a half sheets of puff pastry because of the size of my pan. You can see I just took a third of the piece from the second piece of puff pastry um, and just sort of attached it on there. And now I'm just sort of rolling the whole thing out so that it fits. If I was doing this in like a standard nine by 13 inch pan, I wouldn't have to do that. Yeah, that's pretty perfect. I wouldn't have to do that. Uh, but because I'm using a slightly bigger pot, a bigger like vessel for the whole thing, then I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna just cut the corners slightly on an angle like that just to like round them off a little so that they fit 
in the pan. And by no means do I care about making this perfect whatsoever. I just care that it fits. Yeah, that looks perfect. I'll just trim a little bit of that. Actually, I might not even trim it. I might just do one of these because it's gonna bubble up and be pretty perfect anyway. And I'm always team puff pastry crust over any other crust for a pot pie or any kind of pie. A slit or a few down the center just because you need somewhere for the steam to escape. Then we have an egg wash, which is just an egg, in this case, beaten with a little bit of cream, just because I had the cream right there. Um, otherwise, you could just use a little bit of water or milk. Brush it all over, make it nice and even, just because you want that crust to be a gloriously golden brown color. And because we're going a savory route, if I was using puff pastry for something sweet, I use a pinch of sugar, but because it's savory, we're gonna do a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper on the crust. Into the oven, 375, until it's a beautiful, gorgeous golden brown and bubbly. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Ugh. My pot pie was in the oven for exactly 30 minutes. Now, obviously keep in mind that that timing is going to vary depending on how your oven works. I always say, give it like a 10 minute window. So it could take 20 or it could take 30 or it could take somewhere in between. Um, you should let it cool for a bit. It is so beautiful. It's making my mouth water. It just came out of the oven, but I'm gonna go ahead and just go for it. I'm gonna go for this piece. Oh, look at that crust. Hold on. Oh my goodness. That is pretty perfect. I wanna get some of that filling as well. That kind of just, ah, and as it sets and sits and relaxes, everything kind of melts together really beautifully. That crust is so flaky. That mixture is piping hot. So just give it a second. Mm. The bacon is a necessity. It's so good. It gives you such good flavor, especially with the wine and all of those sweet leeks. I feel like the bacon definitely adds that extra note of like saltiness and smokiness. It's so good. Mmm. Mmm. So hot. But... That's a 10 out of 10. That is fantastic. It's delicious. It's really not complicated or easy to make. Would be great for your holiday table. Go to lawrightinthekitchen.com for the written recipe. I hope you enjoy spending time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.